So today's video, I'm going to discuss three conjugate gradient methods. And these are the heston stifel method, the polak rebier method, and the Fletcher-Powell method. And we are going to take the derivation for quadratic forms, which was done in the previous lecture, and use that particular final formula to derive all these three methods. And you will see how these methods are derived. And essentially, the quadratic equation becomes a more general form, which can be used for a plethora of nonlinear problems. So we start with the conjugate gradient formula for quadratic functions. And if you recall from the last lecture, this is the formula here in terms of beta k. And now we are going to try to get rid of this A matrix. That's the basic thing which we are trying to do. And by getting rid of that A matrix, we are going to simplify these methods and make them more general. Because if you do not have a quadratic function, then the A matrix will not be there for you. But you will still have the D and the C vector. So essentially, what we do here is that we try to vectorize these methods instead of having matrices floating around in this formula. So let's start with this beta k equation here. And you can realize that both the top and bottom or the numerator and the denominator of this fraction are scalars. And therefore, I can take the transpose of a scalar without changing it. And if I do that, I can rewrite it in this form here, recalling that if you have any two matrices A and B, then AB transpose is BT AT. So here we have used the fact that the transpose of the scalar numerator does not change. Now what we are going to do is trying to get rid of this term ADK, which is present both in the numerator and the denominator. So to do this, let us start with the general equation for algorithms. XK plus one equals XK plus alpha K DK and pre-multiply this equation by A. So multiply both the left and right hand side of this equation by the matrix A. So we get this form here. Now, this form will let us get this ADK, which is present here. So before we do that, also consider the fact that if you are dealing with a quadratic function, CK would be AXK minus B, and CK plus 1 would be AXK plus 1 minus B. So these are coming as the gradients of the quadratic function at points K and K plus 1. Therefore, if I subtract these two equations, I can get AXK plus 1 minus AXK is CK plus 1 minus CK, and this is alpha K A D K. <coughs> so from this equation here, I can write ADK is CK plus 1 minus CK by alpha K. So we can remove this ADK in the formula for quadratic functions. So again, recall the formula for quadratic functions here. And this beta K then becomes in this form here because essentially I replace this ADK in this equation by this formula we have derived here. And in doing this, you have got rid of the A matrix. So this particular equation for beta k is expressed solely in terms of the gradient at the current point and the next point and the search direction dk. So this information you will have at any given point and therefore you can use this particular formula now. So this is of course the Heston's type formula. So we see that we can use this formula for a general function as it does not need the A matrix. But if you are using this formula for a general function, you may not converge in n iterations. And therefore, the direction should be reset to the steepest descent direction after you have crossed k is n plus 1 or at k is n plus 1. So this is the formula here. And the interesting thing to see is that essentially both these are exactly same 
and the fact that ADK has been replaced by this particular CK minus CK, CK plus one minus CK here. So this is essentially the derivation of the Heston-Stiefel formula. Now we will start with the Heston-Stiefel formula and derive the polak rebier formula. Now here we start imposing the line search criteria to modify the Heston-Stiefel formula. So again, recall the line search criteria is CK plus one dot DK equal to zero, or if you are writing it in vector form, CK plus one transpose DK equal to zero. Now go back to the Heston-Stiefel formula and concentrate on the denominator. So the denominator term is the term here at the bottom of this fraction. And so let us extract this denominator as D and expand it out here. So D would be DKT CK plus one minus DKT CK, that's the denominator. Now, of course, both these terms are scalars and therefore you can transpose it without changing its value. So we do that here. We take the transpose of this D here. And so we get this equation and then what happens is that we impose the line search criteria. So you are seeing the line search criteria here, CK plus one T DK equals zero. And if you see the first term of this denominator D, that's also CK plus one T DK. And so this becomes zero. So D becomes minus CK T DK. And therefore the heston stiefel formula has reduced to this form. So I have got rid of one of these terms here in the denominator. So the denominator has got slightly simplified. Now we will do some further simplification on this formula. So let us consider the fact that DK is minus CK plus beta K minus one DK minus one. So this is the typical algorithm for search. Now pre-multiply both sides of this equation by CKT. So you get this here. Now, again, if you look at this equation carefully, you can see that because of the line search criteria, this term CKT DK minus one is going to be zero. So this term is going to be decimated. And therefore you then have CKT DK equals minus CKT CK. So this bottom formula here, bottom term denominator can be replaced by minus CKT CK. And we will do that in the next slide. So looking at this formula here, the denominator gets changed. And so you get a formula which is completely expressed in terms of CK and you do not have the presence of D here in this formula. So this is the polak rebier formula. And again, you see now that we have used this fact that the line search criteria must be satisfied. Therefore, this formula will work well when you are doing an exact line search. And of course, this derivation has told you why that will happen because in deriving this formula and putting one of the terms to zero, we have invoked the exact line search criteria. So now we are going to further simplify this formula to get the Fletcher-Reeves method. So that I will show you in the next few slides. So as you can of course see, this formula looks much more simple than the previous formula. So let us start with this polak rebier formula and our intent is to simplify the numerator in this formula. So start again with the search direction, DK is minus CK plus beta K minus one, DK minus one and pre-multiply both sides of this equation by CK plus one, CK plus one transpose. So that yields this equation here. Now observe this equation closely. Again, you will realize that this term CK plus one transpose DK should be zero based on the line search criteria. And so we can set this entire term to zero. Now by doing that, I can get CK plus one TCK is beta K minus one CK plus one T DK. So here we have of course used the line search criteria to put the fact that this term is equal to zero. So this is something which we have obtained now and we are going to use this in the numerated term here. CK plus one T CK you know, to further simplify it. So let's again just keep the Polak-Rebier formula here for reference. And we have seen that we have 
got an expression for the second term in the numerator in the polar Krebier formula. Now we are going to show that this term becomes zero for quadratic functions. So to do that, take the equation for a quadratic function that axk plus one minus axk, just expand it out here. So you put a minus b here and a plus b here. And then you can realize that this is ck plus one minus ck. So this is coming from the fact that essentially this is a gradient vector, this is a gradient vector at point k plus one and k, given that the function f is a quadratic function. Now, once you have done that, you can write ck plus one is ck plus axk plus one minus axk. So what I'm doing is taking this term here, axk plus one minus xk, and taking ck plus one minus ck here and writing this equation out. Now, again, go back to the equation for the search direction, the general equation that is xk plus one equals xk plus alpha k dk. And now pre-multiply both sides of this equation by a. So we get this here and then we get ck plus one is ck plus axk plus one minus axk, which we have derived before. And this will become equal to ck plus alpha k adk from this equation here. So essentially the term axk plus one minus axk is replaced by alpha k adk here. Now we have all the expressions to calculate this term. So ck plus one t dk minus one will become ck plus alpha k adk. So here I'm using the expansion derived in the previous equation and then multiplying by dk minus one and then expand this particular term out. Now observing this term closely, you can see that the line search criteria can be used here to remove the first term that is ckt dk minus one should be zero based on the line search criteria. And the second term will become zero because of the a conjugacy of the vectors dk and dk minus one. So essentially this entire term becomes zero and therefore this term becomes zero here. So essentially this term ck plus one t ck equals beta k minus one ck plus one t dk minus one equals zero. Now the polar Krebier formula given here will then become further reduced because this term has become zero, the ck term to this particular form, which is simply the fraction involving the norms of ck plus one and ck essentially the dot products here. So this is the simplest formula and this is the Fletcher Reeves formula. And this is the most compact and also most popular conjugate gradient formula. But you also see that we have invoked the condition of exact line search once more on the polar Krebier formula and also the A conjugacy factor. So again, these have been further imposed on this particular problem. So essentially now to summarize what we have done in this important lecture today is that we started with this formula for beta k for a quadratic function which involved the matrix A. And if you are presented with a quadratic function, you can of course use this formula because you know A matrix. And then what we have done is we have derived three formulas, first the heston stifels then the polar Krebier and then the Fletcher Reeves. And each of these formulas has involved some approximation in terms of the line search. So as we have gone from the heston stifels to this polar Krebier, we have made the approximation that the line search is to be precise or exact. And again, we have made that approximation here. And also you can of course see that these formulas have become progressively simpler as we have 
removed some of the terms here. Now, the general conclusion can be that the Fletcher Reeves formula is the most compact and also the most popular conjugate gradient formula, but also requires an exact line search. And you will, in fact, see many books will only cover the Fletcher Reeves formula and suggest this as the conjugate gradient method because this is the simple formula here. But in general, the heston stifel formula is best when we are not sure that the line search is very precise. And you can see why that is so, because so many approximation are made about the line search criteria and the derivation of the Fletcher Reeves method. So in fact, if you are doing a quadratic problem, these methods should give you the same results if you are using a precise step size. But if you are using nonlinear problems, then your solutions are going to be different based on the function which you are using. But one more fact to keep in mind is that if you are writing a computer program, it is very easy to have different beta k values coded in and therefore you can code in the beta k value for each of these methods and you can calculate it and compare these three methods. So again, in the book, we have given several examples where you can do these different methods and check out problems. And depending on the function you choose, you will find that the performance of these methods is different and also depending on the line search you choose. So this is a certain fact which you can use in developing projects for optimization as well as developing homework assignments or to some extent even research type papers for class and so on. So again, I hope you learned a lot from this video and one of the important things to learn here is that these formulas do not come out of thin air. They follow a certain process. They start with the quadratic equation and then by making certain approximations, we get rid of the matrix A to get these methods because in many books on engineering optimization, these formulas are presented straight out in the book and many students presume that these formulas have come from some magical source, but it is not so. It's important to know the derivation of these methods in case you are going to use them. And also this particular derivation tells you something about how you can create new methods in optimization by essentially focusing on quadratic functions and then hoping that most functions will work out well with these methods because as I have mentioned many times before, locally these functions are quadratic. So essentially most nonlinear functions are quadratic in a local sense. And that is a fact which we even use in response surface methods where second degree polynomial fits come out to be quite well for most problems. So again, thank you for listening to my video and I think this ends the chapter three and next chapter we are going to review this particular chapter on the steepest descent and conjugate gradient method and then end this particular chapter. Thank you.